archaeologists have recently made fascinating discoveries that shed light on the past. Their efforts have involved delving into pits, exploring ancient trash, and even diving into lakes. These endeavors aim to unearth artifacts and information that deepen our understanding of history. A noteworthy archaeological excavation took place in May 2023 on the English Channel island of Erdeni. The project, known as Dig Erdeni, has unearthed a wealth of Roman artifacts and remnants. Led by Dr. Jason Monahan, the dedicated team has discovered approximately 1,000 pieces of Roman pottery within the layers of an Iron Age cemetery and a subsequent Roman settlement. Although no Roman buildings have been found yet, the abundance of Roman materials speaks to the area's rich historical significance. Lieutenant General Richard Cripwell, the Lieutenant Governor of the Balawick of Guernsey, has joined the excavation efforts and expressed admiration for the diverse and meaningful pottery finds. This ongoing dig in Aderney not only provides insights into the Roman era, but also reveals intriguing artifacts from the Iron Age. As the excavation progresses, excitement builds as more mysteries and stories of this ancient land are unveiled. The presence of such a magnificent amount of Roman material suggests the possibility of a settlement, making the search for it all the more intriguing. Archaeologists at the renowned Pompeii site have made a significant discovery that deepens our understanding of the city's tragic fate. Unearthed at the Castia Monte excavation site, known for its less affluent residences, were two skeletons believed to be victims of the catastrophic volcanic eruption and simultaneous earthquake that struck Pompeii. This finding offers poignant insights into the perils faced by the city's ancient inhabitants during that fateful event. The intertwined remains, discovered alongside the remnants of a collapsed wall, exhibit fractures that attest to the immense force of the collapse. Gabriel Zutrigo, the director of the Pompeii Archaeological Park, suggests that the two men were likely engaged in construction projects involving plaster and water when the disaster struck. The discovery highlights the destructive power of the earthquakes that accompanied the volcanic eruption, shedding new light on the horrifying circumstances experienced by the people of Pompeii. With each new revelation, archaeologists move closer to unraveling the profound human tragedy that unfolded when Mount Vesuvius unleashed its wrath upon the ancient city, transforming Pompeii into a globally significant archaeological laboratory. Recent research challenges the belief that the origin of kissing on the lips can be traced back to a specific location in South Asia 3,500 years ago. Dr. Trollis Punkerball and Dr. Sophie Lund Rasmussen present evidence from written sources in the Middle East, suggesting that kissing was already well established 4,500 years ago in ancient Mesopotamia, which encompassed present day Iraq and Syria. Their findings extend the earliest documented evidence of kissing by 1,000 years compared to previous understanding. The cuneiform clay tablets from Mesopotamia reveal that kissing was regarded as an intimate gesture in romantic relationships, friendships, and family ties, indicating its practice across multiple ancient cultures over millennia. The researchers also point out the prevalence of kissing among bonobos, chimpanzees, and other primates closely related to humans. While kissing has been associated with the potential transmission of diseases like herpes simplex virus 1, researchers caution against solely attributing the rapid spread of pathogens to kissing. Ancient medical texts from Mesopotamia mention a disease with symptoms resembling herpes, suggesting similar conditions existed in ancient times. Essentially, kissing has been a long-standing and sometimes risky activity throughout human history. In other news, during excavations in Istanbul's Sarakani neighborhood, a 1,500-year-old underground pathogen passage has been discovered. This newly discovered passage near Hashim Ishkan Passage has recently been found in Istanbul. Despite the irony of the name, there is no known connection between Hashim Ishkan Passage and this newly discovered passage. The newly found passage exhibits impressive features such as carved marble blocks, reliefs, mosaics, and stone inlays. Remarkably, it has endured the test of time and survived numerous earthquakes, serving as a testament to Istanbul's architectural resilience. Mahir Palat, the Deputy Secretary General of the Istanbul Metropolitan Municipality emphasizes the passage's significance and suggests that the city can learn from its ability to withstand earthquakes. Although the main structure of St. Polyoctus Church was destroyed by an earthquake centuries ago, its infrastructure remains intact, preserving the city's earthquake history. In addition to its passage, the excavation has also yielded other valuable findings, including bronze coins, stamped bricks, marble fragments, ceramics, oil lamps, glass, and metal artifacts. 
Further analysis of mortar and surface samples will provide deeper insights into the technology and composition of the ancient structure. This exciting discovery offers a glimpse into Istanbul's rich archaeological heritage and showcases its ability to safeguard historical treasures. In 2023, archaeologists in Israel made a significant discovery in the city of David, Jerusalem. They uncovered a 2,000-year-old financial record on the pilgrimage road, providing valuable insights into the commercial activities during the Second Temple period. The Israel Antiquities Authority recently announced the discovery of a small stone tablet in Jerusalem. This 2,000-year-old artifact is believed to be a receipt or payment instruction, shedding light on the daily lives of the city inhabitants during the Second Temple period. The inscription on the tablet contains Hebrew names, letters, and numbers, with one line ending with the name Shimon, followed by the Hebrew letter Mem. Other lines include symbols representing numbers, some accompanied by the letters Mem or Resh, which stand for money and quarters, respectively. Similar inscriptions have been found in Jerusalem and Bet Shemesh, but this is the first one discovered within the ancient boundaries of Jerusalem. The tablet was carved into a chalk stone slab, which was likely repurposed from an ossuary, suggesting local trading or craftsmanship. The pilgrimage road, a vital route for both pilgrims and commerce, underscores the significance of this finding in unraveling Jerusalem's historic narrative. In a separate archaeological discovery, a large petroglyph carving was found in the Swedish province of Bohusian by archaeologists from the Foundation for Documentation of Bohusian's Rock Carvings. This petroglyph, a type of rock art created by removing part of a rock surface, was uncovered beneath layers of moss on a rock slab in farm pastures. The archaeologists recently uncovered a 50-foot-long carving in Sweden featuring 40 figures depicting ships, horses, people, and chariots. These well-crafted and detailed carvings date back to the 7th and 8th centuries BCE during the Nordic Bronze Age. The petroglyph provides valuable insights into the cultural and artistic practices of that time. The location of the carving on a nearly vertical outcrop is considered unusual, and researchers speculate that the figures were carved by artisans while stationed on a boat, suggesting a unique method of creation. The significance of the outcrop to the creators of the artwork is still uncertain, but this discovery adds to the concentration of petroglyphs found throughout Bohusian, showcasing various aspects of ancient life. In another archaeological find, a remarkable 1,100-year-old breastplate was unearthed in a fortress on the border between Bulgaria and Greece. Archaeologists believe that this breastplate may contain the oldest Cyrillic writing, adding to our understanding of ancient languages and scripts. The inscription mentions two individuals named Pavel and Dimatar, with Dimatar likely being a member of the fortress garrison and possibly related to Pavel. The inscription is thought to date back to the reign of Tsar Simeon I, who ruled the Bulgarian Empire from 893 to 927. This finding pushes the origins of the Cyrillic writing system, widely used in languages like Russian, to an earlier period than previously known. While more research and a detailed publication are needed for conclusive dating, this discovery has already sparked significant interest among experts. In archaeological excavations, a complex of burnt mounds from the Bronze Age has been unearthed in Laxfield, Suffolk, England. Archaeologists from Cotswold Archaeology made this discovery, shedding light on ancient settlements and practices during that time. During an excavation involving trial trenching, archaeologists uncovered a burnt mound complex at Laxfield, Suffolk, England. And it included the enclosure system from the Bronze Age, remnants of three Iron Age roadhouses, and traces of medieval activity. Burnt mounds, which are enigmatic features in prehistoric times, are formed by flattened mounds of burned stones. These stones were heated and likely used as pot boilers to heat water in nearby troughs, possibly lined with timber. The exact purpose of burned mounds remains speculative, with theories suggesting uses such as bathing saunas, leather treatment, filling, or cooking. These mounds are often found near water sources, but at Laxfield, a large pit or well was dug to reach the water table. Radiocarbon dating of organic plant material preserved in the waterlogged soils of the well helped determine that the burnt mound ceased activity before the Middle Bronze Age. Moving to another location, there is something intriguing about a collection of standing stones in St. Leonard, Switzerland. 
The collection of standing stones, known as Menhirs and St. Leonard, is an intriguing due to their unusual arrangement in a straight line. This is atypical for Neolithic stone monuments as they are typically arranged in a circular formation or in rows. The discovery of these aligned stones took place in August 2021 during an excavation prompted by a construction project in the area. Unfortunately, the ongoing construction project limits the time available for archaeologists to study the stones and their original location. In order to conduct further research, Research, the stones will need to be extracted and relocated, potentially compromising our ability to uncover the purpose behind their straight alignment. Meanwhile, the Nazca lines in Peru have been capturing the attention of archaeologists and scientists. The massive geoglyphs etched into the ground in Peru have fascinated researchers for many years. These intricate designs, spanning miles, can only be fully appreciated from a high vantage point. The people who created these geoglyphs over 2,000 years ago did not have access to technology that would allow them to see the designs from the air. This raises intriguing questions. Why would they create lines that couldn't easily be seen? How do they coordinate their efforts without an aerial view for guidance? Unfortunately, we may never have definitive answers to these mysteries. However, ongoing discoveries continue to expand our knowledge of these geoglyphs. Recently, a team from Yamagata University in Japan identified over 150 previously unknown figures estimated to be around 1,800 to 1,900 years old. Among the new designs are depictions of animals and birds, as well as imaginative representations including monstrous creatures and alien-like figures. Remarkably, one of them is even said to resemble the popular character Homer Simpson. The exploration of these geoglyphs remains an ongoing endeavor, offering new insights into the creativity and cultural practices of ancient civilizations. Over the past two years, archaeologists in Georgia and the United States have been uncovering old cannons from the Savannah River. These cannons have been appearing at a rate of more than one per month, resulting in a total of 19 cannons as of May 2023. Through scientific testing, experts have determined that these cannons are approximately 240 years old. It's highly likely they originated from British ships that were intentionally sunk during the Revolutionary War. The first cannon was discovered accidentally during dredging operations to deepen the river's ship shipping canal in early 2021. This unexpected find prompted archaeologists to conduct further investigations, leading to a series of subsequent discoveries. In Peru, there is a rich abundance of ancient murals and monuments. However, a significant challenge arises from the presence of looters who are aware of these cultural treasures, posing a threat to the preservation of these archaeological sites. A pre-Hispanic mural in Lambayeque was initially believed to have been destroyed by looters over a century ago. However, it was recently rediscovered in November 2022. The mural, which was painted under the wall of the Huacapintara Temple a thousand years ago, has remained remarkably well-preserved. The dense foliage in the area makes exploration challenging, leading to difficulties in accurately locating and documenting findings. Hey, we hope you enjoyed today's video. Make sure you subscribe to our channel for more great content.